The south of France really represents too much beauty for me to ignore. The endless vineyards, the hillside towns, pastel villages and the towns packed with history. It's really just a mouth-watering proposition. On top of this, the towns are visually very very beautiful. So welcome guys to France. Alright, so staying true to the series, we're going to model this off a real life location. The name of the place that I'm taking their inspiration from is called Moisty Saint Marie. I'm just going to call it Saint Marie because my pronunciation of it is terrible. So jumping on Google Earth here, you can see it's in the southeastern part of France. It's also located quite a fair way inland. The most striking feature however is definitely the fact that it's sort of halfway up a mountainside. It's about a thousand feet above sea level. And we've also got this really cool stream or river coming through the town as well. I've also only detailed one small part of the massive normal size map here. The town is going to be tiny, there's no need for me to detail the entire map. But a lot of focus was put on these cliffs directly behind where the town's going to sit. I haven't included any of that footage in this episode. Now, I am going to say really quickly that I'm flirting with the idea of doing a map making special and I may include some of that footage in that sort of one-off special. So getting back to what I'm doing on screen, you're going to see me very excitedly start building the town pretty quickly and I end up changing everything that you see me build here because I didn't check with Google Earth, I didn't check anything and that's a big mistake and I knew it was. So this spot where I decided to start was actually a very important part of the town and very interesting and unique part as well which is why I wanted to get this right. I decided to pretty much start again. I had this river or stream running way way too low. It's in real life it's running much higher like close to the buildings. So I've got to modify the stream bed here quite significantly. Also, looking at Google Earth, I can see that there's three or four really picturesque waterfalls along the way here as well, which I am desperate to start doing. They are just, I love nature, you guys know that. And to have that as potentially a centerpiece running through the middle of town here, yeah, mouthwatering. So the first part of the episode is going to be setting up and getting all of this river detailed. At least this first section of it running through the town. Now I just want to mention I've set the map out so that the majority of the build area is pretty flat. Not perfectly flat but pretty flat at least compared to Crease for instance. That hopefully means I can use real buildings as in not PO buildings. But here on the edge of the stream however these require the buildings to be PO. I just can't mess around with the terrain too much here or the river stops flowing properly and as you can see here, these buildings are placed very, very carefully right down next to the stream. Next, I'm going to build one of those really cool picturesque waterfalls that I mentioned earlier. Now, believe it or not, I made exactly the same mistake that I made at the start of the episode here. I just excitedly got stuck into it after seeing one or two pictures and I end up changing this area. Not as much as the first time I changed the area, but yeah, we change it up a little bit. I think one of my main problems was I was leaving too much space between everything where in real life everything's quite close together and very intimate. I've come to realise during this series that it's really important to try and stick true to that because it creates a very, yeah like I say, an intimate vibe. Man, if there is one thing I learned in Greece, it's that where we get these really extreme bits of terrain, it's much easier to put the pedestrian path down first and then work around it. I don't, however, miss doing it. I kind of enjoyed getting away from Greece and getting back onto some sort of flattish terrain, but this part here is pretty up and down. So if you've seen me building in Greece, then this is going to look pretty familiar. Now next I want to talk about these amazing buildings that I've got here off the workshop. These are actually the South of France style buildings. They're in a pack called South of France. No prizes there for guessing that. But guys, believe it or not, these buildings have been on the workshop since 2015 and they look fantastic. The textures and colours are perfect and the terracotta roof looks really really good. 
and I have to say I'm very surprised at how Mediterranean they look. They look very similar to the buildings I used in the Cinque Terre, for instance, when we were in Italy. And I mean, I don't know, I was just kind of expecting to see that classic tour door board and batten style, you know, heaps of stone and things like that. And even though there definitely is those buildings, predominantly in St. Marie, it's these, yeah, plastered or rendered style pastel coloured buildings. And you can see here that it gets quite technical. You may have noticed that I had a retaining wall in there originally, but I don't want it to look like, you know, or I don't want to be able to see that. There's nowhere that you can see any retaining walls at all. It's all buildings. There also looks to be a pretty cool little restaurant here that sits pretty much right above this little waterfall. And that represents exactly the type of thing I want to include in this series. I think the thing that I love the most about these types of sort of restaurants or cafes is that they were most certainly repurposed into that restaurant or cafe at some point. These were beginning their life as probably just normal residential buildings, serving a completely different but fundamental purpose. And with hundreds upon hundreds of years of changing dynamics around the building, the building's never changed, it's just been repurposed. And I just think there's a real truth to that, you know? Like the building can tell its story without saying a word. So with all of that said, I'm actually going to change the focus up a little wee bit in France. Rather than go hard out on the props like we did in, say, Greece. Well, actually, rather than props, what I mean is things like, you know, market stalls and restaurant tables, menu boards, things like that. Well, in France, we're going to put a bit more of an emphasis on natural detailing. So things like broken buildings, broken decals, concrete, very well-worn areas, overgrown vines and bush everywhere, beautiful flower beds. After all, this town has to tell the story of almost 2,000 years. And I think you guys will agree at the end of the episode that that focus has really changed the look and feel of this town. And I know I say it every time, but this is quickly becoming my favourite place so far. The way that I detail the ground is going to play a huge role in showing the age of our town. Rather than just put one tile everywhere, we're going to see worn out bits. There's going to be new tiles, old tiles, old cobble, and there's also going to be a lot of grass growing through, especially on the less trodden areas. Even though most of our town is going to be pedestrian only, we're still going to have a lot of areas that are right on the roadside here. But the one thing that I want to do, and admittedly this is going to be with decals a bit later, is I want that road to look like the pedestrian roads. You'll see what I mean later on, that probably sounds a bit weird. But I basically just put a decal over them and I use the traffic manager mod to get rid of a lot of the pesky traffic from those roads as well that we don't need. But you can see here that I've got a pedestrian path flowing off the end of the road and it's flowing up and down with the terrain to look a bit more natural. So you guys know the drill, we've got all the buildings in now, let's zoom in and detail the sucker up. Now I want to do this but show off the view from ground level as well that our pedestrians are going to see while they're walking around. So let's get that all important ground detailing done first. These decals from Skibbeth are perfect and we're going to get some grass in between them as well. You'll see me put up other props like shop awnings and lights and because we're at the end of the road you'll see a prop van as well which looks pretty cool. I think he just looks like he's dropping something off. But then you can see as it transitions into the pedestrian path it starts to get a bit more bespoke. There's my favourite word again. 
these areas are always a lot harder to detail they take a lot more time but we're looking for heaps of overgrown buildings here i definitely want a well-worn path going up the hill and this first part here really does represent perfectly the vibe we're going for here in the south of france It wouldn't be a French build without a bakery and I love doing my custom buildings where I build the interior as well and we have real citizens going in. So let's build a bakery here on this really highly visual corner, try and make it look really aged but maybe we can see in from the roadside and see the people going in and buying their lunch or whatever. So I've used a couple of real buildings to make the back of the structure. Then used a procedural objects version of that building to create a roof, just the roof, so that I can build underneath it. Now to make it visual from the roadside, I'm going to put a stone arch around it, and then I'm going to put glass in between those arches later on. So obviously we're going to be able to see straight through the glass. To get people in there, I just run a very narrow concrete pedestrian path in one door and out the other and put an entertainment cube in there so some people are going to hang out in the bakery. I know it might not be the coolest place to hang out but it'd smell pretty good. I am very fond of a pie so I'd probably be hanging out in there anyway. So we're going to finish this bad boy off with a few props. I've got some bread props and some tables and things like that so we'll scatter those around inside in the interior of the building. And one of the coolest things about building these sort of custom buildings is you can put these interior or ceiling lights in and at night they look really cool. They are lit up inside, it's dark outside, it looks really inviting and everything comes to life inside the building. Admittedly I haven't put any lights in in this episode but it's something that we will most definitely get to later on. So St. Marie has this really cool stone bridge that's quite a feature of the town. Not quite to the extent that we had in Spain with the Point Nevo bridge, but it's definitely a point of attraction for the town. Now admittedly, I'd slapped it in pretty quick when I made the map, so we're going to come back here. I want to narrow the road, make it as small and narrow and intimate as I possibly can. With the road, that means using node controller to squeeze it down to about 60% of its normal size. And then the stone bridge is procedural object so I can just squeeze that down to suit. With that done I can move on to putting these waterfalls in and you could imagine I was very excited to do this part of it. And I really made a point to myself to make these look as natural and realistic as I possibly could even if it took a lot longer than it normally would. Because I know for certain, amongst other things, this is going to be a highly cinematic area of the town. It's going to be in pretty much all of the shots that I take, so it better look bloody good. Unfortunately, it's impossible within game to make these sorts of waterfalls. So I've made the river as steep as I can here and then introduced some prop waterfalls and prop water surfaces. And I'm trying to achieve a tiered look to the river in this particular part. Then we are going to make this look massively overgrown. Like imagine for a second this hasn't been touched for like three or four hundred years overgrown. This section right here folks is the epitome of what I'm going for in this France part of our build. Parts of this town are going to look like they have been pretty much completely reclaimed by nature. So I want to finish the rest of the bridge here then we're going to push on to another pretty special build. In real life there is a very cool and cute looking little restaurant or cafe area right here next to the bridge. We've got our bakery on the other side so let's make this a really social and detailed area. I'm going to follow this real life model here as closely as I possibly can. 
we've got some really nice archways that are the first thing I notice and also some coloured buildings behind it and the cafe or restaurant has a really colourful roof or standout-ish roof. So I'm going to try and nail those things but I'm also going to try and make this much like the bakery. We're going to have actual interior to this building. We're going to have a little bit of glass around it and we're going to see pedestrians moving around and through this area. I am absolutely loving the little close-knit vibe we've got going on here and it really is quite amazing how much more the citizens bring it to life when they start moving around the town. I'd really love to hear from anybody who's from France and get their thoughts on what they think so far. I'm pretty excited to dive into French culture and learn a bit more about the place as we build up the town here. If you guys have enjoyed our first little dive in, Hit that thumbs up for me, it helps me with the algorithm and it's very much appreciated. We are going to carry on doing some very cool and unique things in the second episode and I sincerely hope to see you guys there. Take it easy, I'll see you later.